We've talked about the SR latch, which is two cross-coupled NOR gates, and then has two inputs, which we'll call set and reset, or S and R, and then depending on, the circuit remembers which of S or R was high most recently. But sort of in our quest to build up to this ideal register, we don't really want separate set and reset. We want some kind of data signal, like what's the current value, and then we, we want some kind of go signal that says apply this value now. And so the first thing you might think is like, well, okay, like let's just take the data signal and then I can connect that, say, to set. And then maybe invert that. Um, and connect that to reset. So that when data is high, we're going to set. And then this is the output here. And if you wanted the inverted output, so again, this is Q and Q bar here. So if you wanted the inverted output, you could use that as well. So by taking this data signal, we'll pass that to set. So when data signal is high, then the output will be high. Or when the data signal is low, then that causes reset to be high. And then the output will be low as a result. Um, but the problem is like there's kind of nowhere here to have like my go signal. And I'm just driving Q and Q bar directly with D. So anytime D changes immediately, we're gonna see that reflected here. In some ways, it's almost like I've kind of removed, removed the memory completely. So let's erase this and then back up and try again. So I've got some data signal and instead of go, uh, we'll use the term clock. So the clock is going to be this thing that synchronizes all of our logic together. Okay, so we could say when the clock is low, like, like no go, then we want both S and R to be low. But when the clock is high, then we want to pass the value of D, to D through to Q. So we could just use that thing that we had before. So D gets applied to Q, so with by connecting it directly to S and then inverting it and connecting that to R, um, but only when the clock is high. I mean, we could do that. So right, this is in order for S to be high, we're saying that D has to be high and the clock, the go signal has to be high. Um, we could just do that with an AND gate. So let's build an AND gate here. Connect that to S, and then we'll connect that to the clock as well. And then down here, we'll also use an AND gate. So again, connect the clock signal, and we'll need data, but we'll have to invert data, just as before. Connect that. And so now, when the clock signal is high, then the outputs of these will be just as we had drawn before. So the value of data, so when the clock is high, let's use green to describe this. So then, then this signal is going to be 1. And so if data is 1, then this will be 1. This side will remain 0. So this will be one, then the set part of the rat, the latch will be set, and then Q will therefore be high. Okay, but when clock goes low, then this value is always is just gonna be zero, and regardless of what data is, again, because both of these are AND gates, then both of these outputs are gonna be low. And so when the clock is low, nothing from data is going to get passed through. Okay, so that's like sort of the circuit side. Let's look at this on a timeline. So we'll make up some clock and data signals and see what would happen here. So here's our clock and here's D for data. 
And so let's assume that the clock is low for a little while, then it goes high, then it goes low, and we'll let it go high one more time. Okay, and then the data signal will start out low and then it goes high. And we'll do this. Okay, so when the clock signal is low, then both S and R are forced to be low. Okay, and so Q is going to stay whatever the previous state was. So we don't actually know what that state was. Um, so up until the point where clock goes high, nothing's going to happen and we don't actually know. It'll retain whatever the previous state was. Okay, then at the moment clock goes high, then both of these AND gates could potentially become active depending on what D is doing. So now D is already high. So so D is high here, again, like we'd drawn earlier, so clock is high. And so this AND gate is higher. This one remains low because of the NOT gate. Um, so this is still 1 and 0. And so the set signal is applied to the SR latch, and Q is going to go high as a result. So. OK, now clock goes low. Data still is high. So the if clock goes low, again, both the, out, the output of both of these AND gates has to become zero. So S and R go back to zero, but remember this SR latch is still stable. So as long as S and R are both zero, we haven't set R high or anything to, to reset the latch, then Q is going to maintain whatever its current state is. So for the duration where clock is zero, Q is going to stay at the current value. So in this case, it's going to stay high. Okay, finally, clock goes high again, and D is now low at this point. So, if you go back here, I'll use orange this time uh, to represent what, what's happening at this edge. So, D is now low, so this signal is going to be high. And the clock signal is high again. So now R becomes active. And therefore, Q bar is active. Or said another way, Q is going to become low. So at this moment, Q is going to go low. And then it's going to stay low here. Then D goes high again. So we're now switching. So where this side was high and this side was low. Now it's going to flip around, so this side is going to be high. So D is high and not D is low. So S is going to become active again, and Q is going to become active, meaning that D gets copied again to Q. Then D drops again, back down to 0. Again, while clock is high, so that value is going to get passed through. And then we reach the end over here. Okay, so this is the operation of a D-latch. And what it's essentially doing, if you look just at the waveform diagram, that any time the clock is high, so any time our, our go signal or like our apply or whatever you want to call it um, is high, then Q is going to reflect the value of D. But any time the clock signal is low, it's not going to reflect the value of D. It's going to reflect whatever the last value was when it was last high. And so now we have this, this fairly cool circuit that we can pass values through. We can, we can transmit values and copy them. But then when we turn the clock low, it just saves whatever the last state was. And this is a major improvement on the SR latch, where we had these independent set and reset signals. Now we just have a single data signal and the single, this clock sort of enable signal that, that can turn on or off the data, but still preserve the output whatever the, the previous data value was. Okay, the next step is to build this up so that we're edge triggered rather than value triggered. So what that means is right now we get this kind of funky behavior, maybe not, maybe not funky, but we get this behavior where 
when the clock is high, then all of these changes on D are getting reflected at the output. And for our circuit design, it would be nice if we actually, we're really trying to synchronize everything. We want everything to happen at exactly the same time. And so if we could just pick a clock edge, something hap when this transitions from low to high, for example, that's when everything gets synchronized to. And not, not just when values, not just when the clock is high, the values get passed through, but only when the clock edge happens, then we'll pass values through. And that's going to be the goal of the flip-flop, which we'll talk about in the next video.